Welcome to church. We gather to worship an amazing God who created the heavens, the earth, all that lives, crucified, buried, risen, holy. Jesus is good. Jesus is forever. You are loved. You are accepted. You belong. Welcome to Revision Church. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to Revision Church Atlanta. We are so glad you've joined us for this worship experience. Hello, friends and family. Good to be back with you again. That's right, that's right. It's been a couple of weeks yeah. since we've been home at Revision Church mm -hmm. Atlanta, been at camp meeting and graduations. Uh, but today we came to celebrate the goodness of God today mm -hmm. with our church family and to all those who are visiting. If this is your first time here at Revision, we are so excited that you're here. Thank you for taking the time this morning to join us for this virtual worship experience. We encourage you to subscribe there on our YouTube channel if you're watching there, to follow us on Facebook, and to make sure that you share this link with friends even today. I'm telling you, you don't want to miss and you don't want your friends to miss this worship experience. Amen. All right. So listen, what we like to do is to get active in the chat there on YouTube and on Facebook just in the live chat, just drop, just say hello, say what's up, say good morning. Let us know where you are watching from and we're gonna do some shout outs. We wanna call your name as, you're, uh, as you appear on the screen. Good there. morning, Ruth. Good morning, good Ruth. Morning. All right, you in Fort Worth today. Yes, yes. All right, we gotta play that game, where is Ruth? Ruth, uh -huh. Ruth? Ruth is over somewhere, so glad you're with us today. All right, Annette. All right, South all right. Kakalaka, all right, One you're here. Revisioneers, our good, online good. members, that's good stuff. All right. Okay, we got Sakani Ewers. Ah, from right. Costa, Rica. Costa Rica. What's up, Welcome. Costa? Yeah, yeah. We, What's up, Costa? Costa Rica. I just, I just come <laughs> out and said Costa. All right. What's up, Costa? Yeah, you were so formal this morning. I was here to say, just tell the people to holler at us. All right, us. all right. Go on and holler at us. Uh-oh, right. all Mozambique. Right. All right, Leonardo Miguel. All right, Mozambique. welcome, welcome. So glad you're with us. We get excited about the mother continent. Oh, we love it. We yes, love it. Yes, yes. Good stuff. Thank you for being with us. All right. Okay, Natalie. Good like morning. Natalie, one of our Good to online see you members again. Yes. We're visioneers from Newport, Rhode Island. All yes. right, Natalie. Good to see you. All right. All right. Just get active in the chat. How Saturday are you? Families. Welcome back from the UK. Okay. Glad you joined us glad from Milton us. Keynes. Yeah, yeah, All yeah. Right. West Africa. What's up, Juliana? Yes, good, Ghana. good. We yes. Got, we, listen, we got to get we got to get over there. We've been talking about. Yes, it. yes. We well, one of our members, their mom. It's from that's Ghana. right. That's yeah, right. That's, from, from God. That's Coleman. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Welcome. Yeah. So glad you are there and that you joined us for worship. Always good okay. To see you. Oh, human nurse working in, in Qatar. Qatar. And follow Ooh, wonderful. you. Wonderful. Wonderful. Regla. Oh, so we glad are you're so with us. glad you're here today. Yeah. Blessings on you as you serve. That's right. May this message and worship pour back into you. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. Listen, is it Qatar or Qatar? I've heard people say. Well. Cutter, you know. We saw the spelling up there. I think you can just <laughs> uh, we gotta say it how you feel it. We got to get there. Cutter, yeah. Dubai. Yeah, Dubai. Uh, we got to get, yeah. My sister uh, uh, Evelyn is in Dubai. That's right. Yeah. What's up, What's up yeah. Evelyn? Shout out. Yeah, good right. morning. Good morning, Joyce. What's up? From sunny where? It's nice and warm in Illinois. That's good. Okay, good. Summer's coming. Yeah, well, she, summer's here. So she keeps us abreast on the weather. On the weather. Yes, yeah, so we appreciate that, Joyce. <laughs> we need to know what's going on. That's right. That's right. What's up, everybody? What's up, Sam? Sam, Tate. all right, Rochester. What's up? Rochester's in the house. Okay. Rochester's always represented every week. Yes, Highland, New York. Gene Eugene, Highland, New York. What's up, New York? Again, the hey, state of New York hey, is yes. heavy, heavy in the chat. Praying on, for everybody. you all so y'all can 
You don't have to breathe heavy, but you can breathe That's free. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. Welcome, Tiffany. Tiffany. From Calgary. Yes. Listen, we got we got a, a, a crew out there yes. in West in Western Canada. So glad Calgary, Edmonton, even uh, BC. So glad that Thanks you're with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Praying for, for you with all us. out there with the fires. That's right. And What's good up? morning, Yin. <laughs> I'm so happy. My <laughs> husband's like, Lord, don't start, Stephanie. Yeah, don't start. Well, yeah, yeah. I was just like, woke up, up so grateful for you this What's morning. Up, sis? And yeah. just the blessing you are. That's Whoever right. put you up there, truly the spirit is moving already. All Good right. morning. Good morning. Good I'm morning. all done for now. All right. Yes. You mm -hmm. Text her later. All right. I texted her this you. morning. Okay, matter of fact. wonderful. What's up, all Stephanie? All right. All right. <laughs> Weston, don't move me on. All right. My namesake there. What's morning. Up, Stephanie Glee from, from Barry. Barry. Now, right. did you know about Barry? Of course. Barry's well, wait, Ontario. I, it's right outside the outskirts of Okay, Toronto. you never told me about Barry. I got Barry. people in Barry. Who you got in Barry? I got people. What, what's the name of the people <laughs> sitting up here? I got people. I know people from Barry. It's good to have you. Don't know they, he don't know y'all name, though, but it's nice to meet you, Stephanie. <laughs> Oh, never God, told me about like Barry. Yes, there's all kinds of places outside Toronto. Mm -hmm. well, Oshawa. Maybe, now, we Barry. have heard of Oshawa. Yeah, yeah. All and of, what else? London. Okay. Yeah, Kitchener. Okay. So okay. Trying, like, I don't know my home. I know, I know you know, home. but you just hid Barry from me. That's all I'm all saying. Right, you hid Jenny. Barry. All right, what's up? Good what's morning, up? Christine. It's been a while. Miss you, sister. Yes, that's right. Blessings you on you and Michael. God bless you In Covington. The revision members are strong in the chat. Okay, See, we live out so, in the outskirts. We can hear birds and everything. I bet you can hear your birds too, Christine. That's right. They that's loud right. over here in London. Bastard Merrick from Hampton. Let me finish the word, honey. Oh, you're I'm cutting so, me, I'm so you know, sorry. cut me to the quick. Oh, okay. All, All right. right. <laughs> Hey, Vashti. What's from up? From Hampton. That's right. We thought about Hampton area. One we while. did. We were mm -hmm. looking at that. Mm -hmm. We were looking at that, but we decided on where we are. Uh, Ruth Ooh. Fort. From okay. Dayton, Ohio. Saint Port. Uh -huh. All right, Saint Port. Saint yes, Port. All right. Dayton, Ohio. All right, from Dayton, Ohio. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, Ruth. Thank it's you for nice being with us. Nice to see you. Yeah, good yes. stuff. Good stuff. Listen, y'all are ready. Y'all are ready. We're glad that you are here. We've got a connection question because we like to keep this interaction going. As you can tell, we we have fun doing this. <laughs> so uh, we want to keep this interaction going. Just keep that levity. But this is actually a pretty deep and good question. So our connection question for the day is... Thank you for putting it up there. Because <laughs> I can come up with it, but I can't remember it. Oh, what makes it. you feel like you belong? Yeah. What makes you feel like you belong? What makes you feel like you belong, Wes? Mm, well, what do you mean? like In, in, in any community, within mm -hmm. a family, yeah. uh, on your job, um, anywhere, what, what is the... Con what is the experience? What is the feeling that you have that mm -hmm. lets you know you belong? Yeah, eye contact when somebody okay. looks me in my eyes, speaks to me. Yeah, like I belong there. Yeah, and this is important. Um, I'll say another one that makes me feel uh, like I belong mm -hmm. is when people uh, acknowledge hmm, when you when they acknowledge you or your your culture or your people. Mm -hmm. I, I was just in a space okay. and a place um, not too long ago where I, I did not feel like I belong. Oh my God. I, and, you know, I actually yes. preached about this a few weeks yes, ago in I the place this. where they banned the clapping. I didn't feel like I belonged there okay. because they didn't recognize my cultural part particularity, my practice, the mm -hmm. way that I am. So when, when you feel comfortable, yeah, that you makes belong. you feel like you belong. Yeah, okay, yeah. good, good. What all are y'all right. feeling so we out gave there? You some time to come add, on, to get some answers. What, what makes, makes you, you feel? feel like you belong? That's right. At church, at home, at school. What what's there that lets you know? Respect, Dee Dee. Yeah. Respect. That sounds great. Yeah, yeah. respect. Good. When you're respected, when you feel respected, uh -huh. yeah. you belong. That's good, Dee Dee. Thank you. Now Natalie, friendly people. Friendly people. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Yeah, friendliness. Good yes, stuff. I met a friendly woman yesterday. I like Hillary, that. acceptance. Hillary, acceptance. So included, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. some intentionality. That's good. Thank you, mm -hmm. Hillary. Good to see you. What's up, Dr. Court? Active participation. Ah, yeah. That makes you feel like yeah. you belong when you can have some input, some yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. I love That's that. Great. That's great. Great. Good stuff. What makes you feel like you belong? Tracy, acceptance from those around me. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, that's acceptance. good. That's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, that you. The long, what's a yeah, a genuine smile. Yes, 
That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what I said. Genuine smile. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yes. But I like that. It's genuine. It's not. Yes. Pain. Come on. Come on. on. Hi, how are you? Know, and all that stuff like that. Right. That'll cause me to turn away. Right, right, right. I love That's it. That's good, my it. dear. What's up, Maxine? Participation and acknowledgement. Oh, my Lord, Charles. I Come on, that, I Maxine. Think, I think Participation, acknowledgement. Yes. I was trying to say acknowledgement. Well, last week, yeah. Uh, last week, Friday on my birthday. Yes. And you took me to the store. Yes. And it took the sisters a little long to acknowledge my presence. Yes. And I didn't cop attitude. But when they you finally. Didn't, you didn't cop no, attitude? No, 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 honey. Oh, okay. I used my voice. Okay. You when she finally voice. came over, I, she said, hi, are you, you know, how may I help you? I said, well, I am a little concerned. I said, no one has acknowledged me yet. <laughs> and she said, "Oh, I'm so." And I said, "Okay." I said, "Well, now that you're acknowledging me, mm -hmm. let's see, let's see if you can get a purchase today. How right, about that?" Right. And, and she and, and the, she did. Yeah, and she did. Yes, we purchased. Yes, because but that's we, because you were acknowledged. Yes. Yeah. And there's grace. There's grace. Yes. Um, but that that's important to me, and it was probably more important because it was my birthday. That's right. Now she didn't know that, but you never know what day it is or what someone is going through. That's right. Um, that a genuine smile, acknowledgement of their person yes. is important. Yeah. And, and we were talking this morning, honey, and the reason we said what makes you feel like you belong is because I mm -hmm. think sometimes we think we can give that out here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of like, um, you know, you know, a compliment. But it's not like that. It's, yeah. it's actually one of our needs as human beings. Yeah. You know, like, like last time I drank was Wednesday. No, you need to drink every day. Mm -hmm. You need to eat every day. You need yeah. to rest and you need to belong. That's right. Because it's part of what makes us feel like we are human and mm. we are loved. That's it. Yeah. Basic human needs. Yeah, it's a basic. I love how you, you're so concise, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> right, like basic that. human need. A basic right? human need. To belong. So don't give that out sparingly, you come know? On, Let's on. not give that out sparingly. That's a good word. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a whole word. You, yeah. can, you can take it like you take some of the other ones. It's yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it matters. Don't give that out sparingly. Okay, our second question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that is the question. No. Okay. Yeah. yeah. How can you help others oh, that's right. feel like that they belong? belong. Oh, so since good. we all have acknowledged we want to be seen as humans, we want to belong, that's how good. can you help others feel, feel like, like they, they belong. belong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's put that in the chat. Yeah. How do you make others feel like they belong? Yeah. Well, I, tr I try to look them in the eye, mm -hmm. you know, ask them their name. Right. Um, maybe even like when I was checking out, just a side note. Thank you, Revision Church Atlanta, for my gift card. Yeah. I knew it on yesterday. That's right. So while I was there, the cashier, mm -hmm. uh, she was from New York. I said, I hear an accent. Where are you from? And oh, boy, she lit up. She was from New York. And she started to talk about where she was from. And I just saw her whole disposition change. Change, yeah. She went from dealing with some rowdy customers before me to smiling and laughing. And we had a great exchange. Mm -hmm. So making eye contact finding something that's important to the other person yes. and engaging them. Yeah. You know, just act like you care. Well, right. actually care. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. I think asking questions like you did, mm -hmm. ask them a question. Yeah. To ask somebody a question means that you're interested in them. Yeah. And that's how uh, some people can feel that they belong. Let's see some of your answers. Yeah. Uh, what are you putting down? All right. Approach, approach them. them. Yeah. That's good. That's very good, Natalie. Oh, uh, listen, listen. This is good stuff. I love it. We're going to take your answers. I'm going to yeah. show you how this connects today. Oh, glory. Right. Approach glory. Them. Sakani Ewers, that's the reason I'm here. I feel like I belong. Well, come on, Sakani. Oh, come on. Give them praise. You Ooh, do belong. You belong. You belong Make sure I lay out. Yeah. Uh, next time, I'll see an S there, but we may have to get a picture because I got to know who I'm talking to. Yeah, so kind of, we, yeah, yeah. You do belong I'm here. I'm so glad. Isn't yeah. that amazing that, that you feel like you belong and it's virtual? Now, that's crazy. You've never met Only us, God can right? do that. Oh, that's a blessing. Only God. Dr. Court, yeah, I see you ask questions. And, and ask their opinion. Ask their opinion. Wow, that's big. That's amazing. Jesus, when's the last time I had somebody's opinion? That's amazing, y'all. Y'all are doing, yeah, I know, to ask. Someone's yes. opinion. What Someone's do you think? Opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. that assigns value. There you go. Come on. Value, go. belonging. Come on. We're all interconnected. Yeah. yeah. Hugs. Hugs. That's yes. great. Yes. That's great. Yes. 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 And sometimes I'll even ask, like, I'll say, maybe I'm a hugger. Do you hug or That's do you right. mind hug? Or, That's right. Well, and if they do, give them a good hug. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hug is good. Include them in what you're doing, Hillary. Yeah. Okay. Okay. To include them in what 
you are doing. doing. Listen, and y'all are giving some yeah. really good answers. Uh, and this goes deeper than I think mm-hmm. we're even recognizing mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Let's get maybe just one more. What are ways that we make other people feel like they belong? Like yeah. they belong. I'll tell you this. Oh, look at that baby. Oh, beautiful. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. precious one. Of, of Asia, when she was a baby, was. yeah. Tamara V. Dubs, listen. I know. I grew up with her as a child. Hello, Tamara. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> I think Florida? so. I think she's from Florida. Okay. She said, okay. listen patiently. Listen patiently. That's amazing. Yeah, listen if patiently. V is for Bali, then that's her. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh-huh. Listen Patient. patiently. Oh, wow. that's good. Yeah, that's good. That's oh, good. that that means you're, no, you're a good listener, Charles. I'm a good listener. You're a good listener. Thank you. That's kind of what hooked me at the beginning. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Those right. eyes and those ears. All right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, let me get back on track. All right. So <laughs> that's how we make people feel like they belong. You guys said some great things. Great. Listen carefully. Mm-hmm. Ask questions and ask their opinion. opinion. Right? Mm-hmm. To uh, to uh, eye contact. Approach Genuine them. smile. Approaching them. Mm-hmm. Right? Um um, involving them or allowing yes. them to participate. Yes. All of these things are what help people belong. Now, hear me, church. Sometimes you might think we do these connection questions just randomly to yeah. just have fun. It's fun, but it always connects. Yes. Connects to either the message or to the mission of Revision yes. Church. And here's how this question connects and why the Spirit led you today. hmm Because in this month, we celebrate not only Black Music Month, which I think is a great thing, Mm -hmm. but this month also, there's a community that celebrates Pride Month. Mm -hmm. Now, in Pride Month, the LGBTQ plus community uh, celebrates their humanity, the fact that they are here, that they are alive, and that they should belong. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. Mm -hmm. If all those things you just said are ways that we make people feel like they belong. Mm -hmm. My question is, does that kind of belonging belong to everyone? Mm. Do we hold back Mm -hmm. our friendliness, our genuine smile, asking people questions or listening patiently just because they're of a different orientation or live a different lifestyle? Hmm. And perhaps the deeper question is, My God. does God not allow you to belong when Come you live well, just in a, a way minute, Jesus. that he does not agree with? Hmm. I think we all know the answer, but it's harder to live it out. My God. Our prayer today mm-hmm. is that regardless of who a person is, how they live, who they love, where they come from, my Lord, what they look like, Jesus, that we will allow them to belong Mm. because you don't have to agree to belong, to belong. (laughs) You don't, you don't have to be perfect to belong. belong. You just have to be human. Glory to God. And today we want to make sure, in fact, today, later today, we're going to be practicing how it is we as a church can love people so that they understand that they belong. Amen. And so we're looking forward to that. We'll tell you a little bit more about that. But today we want to pray. Mm-hmm. We want to pray that God will make us instruments of belonging, that God will oh, use God. us to help people mm-hmm. belong mm-hmm. on our jobs, on, uh, on our college campuses, yeah. wherever we are, that God will use us to help people to belong. So as you drop your prayer request right now in the chat, would you drop your prayer request in the chat? And we're going to be praying. We're praying not only for ourselves, but we're praying for some family members. We're praying for things that we need God to change mm-hmm. or to do or to provide. Strangers. But we also want to pray for those around us, mm-hmm. neighbors, co-workers, strangers, people we've come in contact with. We sensed their need mm-hmm. for belonging. Let's intercede on their behalf today. Amen. All right. Our first lady, Steph, is she going to pray for us? Mm -hmm. We want you to get in your prayer posture wherever you are. Um, And as we get ready to pray, let's believe that the God we are talking to knows us and loves us and causes us to belong. Amen. All right. Let's pray together. Let's pray. 
Oh God, we are excited about what you have in store for us mm. today. We're not even going to go into the future, but today we know that you have prepared a day for us, a day for us to experience you, a day for us to be lifted from our burdens, our trials, and our cares, a day for us to help liberate others who don't belong, to liberate others who are feeling down, mm. to give them hope. Yes. Because the same God that gave us hope yes. and gave us help yes. wants to do the same for them. Yes. Not only does God want to, God is able. Mm -hmm. The Lord is willing. Mm -hmm. The Lord is strong enough. You, the Lord yes. is mighty. You the are. Lord is for us. Oh God, we bless you this morning. And to my brothers or sisters or people in the world who are struggling, struggling in their mind, struggling in their spirit, struggling on their jobs. God, right now in the yeah. name of Jesus, Jesus, I speak peace over them. I mm -hmm. speak joy. I speak deliverance, not because there's any power in me, but because mm -hmm. body of believers, we come in the name of Jesus. Yes. And in the yes. name of Jesus, Jesus, the enemy can be bound. Yes. And in the name of Jesus, joy can be loosed. And in the name of Jesus, the sick can become better. And in the name of Jesus, yes. those who are confused can receive clarity. Yes. It's all in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. So we rest in that name. Hallelujah. We worship in that name. You, we accept forgiveness in in that name. Yes. We give forgiveness in that name. Mm. We love you, Lord. We adore you. We yeah. exalt you. Yeah. We praise you. Lord, we are not alone. Hallelujah. We do belong. We are not alone. We do belong. I don't know who that is for today, who's struggling in that, their spirit, but repeat that. I do belong. I am not alone, alone because God said it. Yes. And the people of God echo it. Mm -hmm. yes, oh are. God, you are just, yes. you are mighty. Mm -hmm. And we're asking that you fill us, Please. not so that we can ask others to look and see how spirit filled we are, yes. but so that wherever we walk, whatever we touch may experience the goodness of God yes. while they are in the land of the, the living. living. Yes. Oh, we love you this morning uh, and we know you love us yes. and we're glad you love us. It's your love that woke us up. It's yes. your love that gave us a mind to, to look at Revision Church Atlanta. It's your love that's going to mm. keep us all day long. Thank you, Lord. And for that, we are eternally grateful. Yes, God. You're a good father and thank you've you. been a good mother yes. to all of your children. Yes, God. And we thank you and bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Come Thank on. Thank the Lord this we morning. We praise God today. We give him glory today yes. for his goodness. Oh, I can tell yes. we're going to have church today oh, yes. in this virtual sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen. Things are about to change. We're about right. to go into something that's going to change everything. We mm -hmm. announced it several weeks ago. We've been talking about it every week. And we want to take just a moment because we're going to talk about Selah. Selah Yay. is coming. Yeah. Selah is coming the end of this month. We're going to have our first Selah Saturday as we are in this new rhythm uh, starting this month. So first and third Saturdays, we are in person. And then the second Saturday, which is today of mm -hmm. June, we always have a service project, which we'll have one today. I'll let you know that in a few moments. And then on fourth Saturdays is our Sela Saturday. And we're going to take just a moment now to take to talk about Sela Saturdays. Sela Saturdays is a time where we take a voluntary and intentional pause from the regular rhythm of worship so that we can be able to come together as the early church did Amen. in homes yes. all around the world. Yes. All right. So we're going to take just a minute. Let's put that up. We're going to talk about Selah. And here, as we look at Selah, I'm going to invite Pastor Gina to join me as we go through a couple of questions, some frequently asked questions about Selah. What's going on, Pastor Gina? I'm doing good. I'm good. I'm excited to talk more about Selah here today. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Listen, church, 
we want you to know that not just Revision Church members, but everyone who views and worships with us on a regular basis, we want you to be part of Sela Saturday coming up in just two weeks. It's the fourth week, the last Saturday of this month. So here are some questions that we've heard as a pastoral staff, uh, just as we're having conversations with people, phone calls, texting people, or just interaction with you. Here's some questions that I think are going to be helpful for you to get answered today. All right. So how long will we be doing Sela? All right. How long am I committing to being a host? If you're going to be a host, that is open your home or apartment or or a space so that you can have people join with you in that small group of Sela. Well, how long will we be doing it? At least we know for the rest of this calendar year. All right. Amen. We do not know what next year holds. We're hoping and planning that we can continue to do it. Um, but we're going to continue to follow the spirit. The same Holy Spirit that led us to do Selah is the one that's going to lead us to know when we transition to something else. All right. But we are here to equip you and help you to be a host. And as we go on with these questions, I think it's going to alleviate many of your uh, apprehensions. All right. What's our next question? Our next question is, do I need to host every single month? Do I need to host every month? And the answer to that is no. You don't need to host in your home every month, but you can rotate amongst others in your Sela group. So one week you can host at your home your home. And then the next week you can host at another person's home. You guys can rotate and share that responsibility. Yeah. Our next question. Yeah, that's great. All right. Next question. My next question is, I don't live in the Atlanta area. Uh, we'll put that on the screen. I don't live in the Atlanta area. Should I sign up to be a host of a group? This is a really good question. We've heard this several times. So should I sign up to be a host of a group? And the answer is absolutely yes. We welcome people to sign up as hosts wherever you are, not only in this country, but in the world. All right. It's not necessary for you to live in Atlanta to be a host. We have these location groups. And so, listen, we've got people I already know that are hosting in Toronto, that are hosting in D.C. They'll be hosting, I believe, all uh -huh. over in Calgary and Edmonton. We've got a group in England I think is forming. So wherever you are, you can sign up to be a host. And remember, we're going to give you an orientation and a training so that you know what to do. All right. Next question. Our next question is, should I sign up to be a host even if I'm not a member of Revision Church Atlanta? And our answer to that is, we do want our hosts to be members. So yes, you have to be a member of Revision. But if you are transferring, if you're in the midst of becoming a member, we will also accept you. But if you do want to be a host, you do have to be a member. And here's one other thing, though, Pastor Gina, um, that we want to clarify is that there are some people, right, who are not members, but they watch all the time, right? They're, they're regulars that worship with us. We just recently, we just opened it up because we were, we were talking and saying, listen, again, like the folks in D.C., I know they watch all the time, but they're not members, right, or maybe not members yet. You can certainly host, right? Mm -hmm. People that are in England who do that. Because remember, we're giving you the training so that you know what to do. We're doing the teaching. You don't have to do it. So uh, we're opening that. We are now opening that to, uh, to those who are non-members. As long as you understand the mission and vision of Revision, you worship with us all the time, you certainly can do that. All right? Next one is, do I have to cook for my group? Do I have to cook for my group? Some people have been asking that. Do I have to cook for my group? Do I have to cook every fourth Saturday for the people who come over? Uh, we strongly do encourage you to have a meal together, but you do not have to cook every fourth Saturday, every Selah, all right? You don't have to do that. You guys can do potluck, right? You can have people who bring their own things. You can have snacks. But, but the reason we want you to have a meal is because you connect on a deeper level when you share a meal. Mm -hmm. Everyone basically knows that uh, the, 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 the most closely connected cultures of the world do everything around meals. And so the early church, the Bible says, it's right there in Acts chapter two, that they were studying the apostles doctrine and that they did the breaking of bread 
every time they got together, all right? And that's not just communion, that's referring to eating meals together. So we strongly encourage you to eat a meal so you can connect with each other. And you've got different ways that you can do that. All right, what's our next question? Our next question is how much facilitating do I need to do? I'm an introvert and I love this question. <laughs> this question is perfect because I'm an introvert too. Yes. And all you need to do as a host, as you facilitate is to have a space uh, so that can be your living room. Uh, that can be even outdoors if you want to meet in a group outdoors at a park. You need a screen. So have your laptop or your TV to broadcast uh, our video guide. Also, some snacks, some food. You heard that. You don't need a whole four-course four meal, but at least some type of snacks and uh, drinks would be good to have for your group. And lastly, the last responsibility is to share tasks and share the location of your group. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So introverts, you are welcome. This is introvert friendly. Pastor Gina's an introvert. She gets it. She's going to be hosting at some point. So listen, we, 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 we got you covered. All right. Here's the next question. You're saying I won't be available. All right. I won't be available in June in two weeks to host. All right. Should I still host? And the, uh, the answer is sign yes, up. you can still sign up. All right. Now, what we'll do is that we're going to list all of the groups in Atlanta and all around the world on our website so that people know where the CELA groups are, okay? So if you're not hosting in June, what it will say is coming soon, all right? You might be willing to do that and able to do it in July. We understand this is vacation time. It's summertime. Uh, some of you might not be available till, uh, till August. Hopefully not, but for some people, that's what it is. Still sign up now so that we can have you on the host list. All right, next question. Next question, will there be ongoing signups? People have been asking. And to that, the answer is yes, there will be ongoing signups. You'll, there'll be a QR code for you to sign up later on today, but also you can go to our website, revisionchurchatlanta.org slash Sela, and just scroll down to uh, join to be a host and you can sign up very easily. That's right. That's right. And uh, we're going to continue pushing the host signups today and next week. So you're always going to hear this. Um, at the end of service, you need to also sign up for our email and text messaging if you haven't done that so that you could also get the links there. All right. Next question is, what time do I host? People have been asking this. What time do I host? Does it have to be at 1130? Is that when we're going to do our SELA gathering? Here's the answer. Your group can meet anytime in your time zone because we know it's people all over the world, anytime in your time zone that's within the Sabbath hours, right? So if you're in England, that's going to be a different time zone, but it's within the Sabbath hours. It can be Friday evening. It could be Saturday morning. It could be Saturday afternoon. Anytime within the Sabbath hours, we want you to do this, all right? And it works with whatever group that you're forming or that you're gathering together. So it does not have to be at 1130 a.m. All right. Next. And next is what is the minimum number of people I would need to have to be considered a group? And the minimum is three. We are following the biblical example of where two or three are gathered. The Lord will be in your midst. So the minimum number of people of group or minimal number of people in a group is three. So you guys can talk together, share uh, your answers to the questions and just really fellowship together. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And I think most groups, yeah, two or three, of course, it's, I mean, sorry, not two, three, really. It really is three, three. But hopefully that you get more uh, than that. I think most groups that I know that are forming are more than that. Uh, we've got organic groups that will form um, as the leader kind of forms those groups. Uh, there's already connection between those people. And then there's location base where somebody will say, hey, I'm in Lawrenceville or hey, I'm in Hampton or I'm in wherever, and we'll form those groups based on location, all right? The last question that we've frequently asked question is, uh, as a host, what are some appropriate etiquette tips that I should keep in mind, all right? Here's what you want to do as a host, and you'll get more of this in the training. You want to maintain a warm and welcoming atmosphere, all right? Uh, provide a space that is safe 
um, that is welcoming to everyone and comfortable for everyone. So you don't want to put people, we're not going to be putting people on the spot. Not everybody has to talk right away. Um, this is not a Bible study per se. It's not going to be where people have to go deep into scripture. This is a time for you to connect. All right. And so you don't have to be nervous if you want to be a host or to sign up to be part of a group. This is an amazing way for our revision, for our members, for those who worship with us to connect with each other. I want you to think about this, that in this new worship rhythm that we have, we're connecting every single week, right? Every single week. Even today, though we're virtual, Revision, at least in this local space here in Atlanta, we're connecting to serve mm -hmm. together today, all right? We're working on ways where we can be able to duplicate what we're doing here in this service project all around the world to our revisioneers and our friends, all right? So that's coming, but we want you to know this is about connection. And when we connect, God does amazing things. Thank you, Pastor Gina. We appreciate it. We know you'll be back at the end of the worship experience today. And now as we get ready to worship, we want you to just get ready to sing with our praise team. Don't just sit there or, you know, just kind of look. It's not a spectator sport. This is time to participate, to throw up your hands, lift up your voice and worship. Let's worship God and then I'll be back to bring us the word for today. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord hath made. The Bible says, I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. So wherever you are right now, will you just take a brief moment and rejoice with us? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, let's bless the name of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I will Can you repeat rejoice that? and be glad in it. Say, this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on. Say, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Can we sing that again? Come on, let's sing it again. Come on, say. So this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. One more time, say. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Are you guys excited about today? I am. I will rejoice 
your mind today that no matter what you're going through, I still got enough praise in me to still say hallelujah. How many of you know that God is good? Song simply says, great are you, Lord. Can we just lift our hands wherever you are right now? And let's begin to worship him. Tell him how great he is. Hallelujah, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Where would I be? Where would I be? Yeah. I could have lost my mind. Oh, I could have lost my mind. I could have lost my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You are hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, cause it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Come on, we're talking about the God and the creator of the universe. We're talking about the King of Kings. Come on, somebody open up your mouth and praise him in this place. I don't care where you are in life, he's still great. I don't care what you're going through, he's still good. He deserves all of our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Can we sing that again? Listen. You are life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You are hope. You restore. Every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Come on, it's your breath. It's your breath. In our lungs. In our lungs. So what are we going to do? So we pour out our praise. Come on, let me hear you sing it.
praise right now? I said, can we pour out our praise right now? Can we pour out our praise right now? Why? Because he's the king of kings. Because he's the creator of the entire universe. He deserves it. Woo. My God deserves it. Hey, you deserve it. Hey, yeah, you deserve it now. Come on, just worship, worship everybody. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out. It's the breath that you breathed into us, God. When you created man. Come on. Cut the music. It's your breath. Come on. What are we gonna do? We pour it out. Hallelujah. It's in our lungs. So we pour out. So we pour out our praise to you Come on, somebody lift up your voice.
thank you for your patience. Sometimes we have these technical difficulties outside of our control, but we know that God is in control. Thank you for staying with us uh, as we anticipate God's word today. And thank you once again, our media team who always works so quickly to make sure that any hiccups or issues are addressed. And we praise God for you uh, working in excellence today. Uh, listen, we want to give a happy birthday shout out to my son, our son, Ajani. It's his birthday today. And we just want to let you know we love you and appreciate you. We're looking forward to celebrating you all weekend long. So shout out to our son, Ajani. Both of our kids are home from college and we're looking forward to spending the summer together. Listen, today uh, we have good news uh, to celebrate the goodness of God um, because God continues to answer prayers. I don't know if you heard yesterday, but you should be paying attention, especially if, if you live in these yet to be United States of America, that the Supreme Court um, has ruled to uphold a key component of the 1965 Voting Rights Act as those folks down in Alabama tried to uh, do some illegal and unethical redistricting, uh, the Supreme Court has helped uh, to keep that key component in there. As you know, they have been stripping away components of that Voting Rights, Voting Rights Act, but we're grateful today that God answers prayers and stayed the hand of the enemy so that we continue to have our sacred right to be able to lift up our voice and vote. And that's going to be key as in next year we'll be having the presidential election. And so we are grateful because God answers the prayers of the saints. We're also grateful today that God answers prayers for uh, our former uh, president is now being able or beginning to be held accountable for his actions. And I think as a people of God, we ought to pause and thank God for answered prayers. In the Bible, when the enemies of God's people, those who sought to oppress, to subject them to suffering, to discriminate against them or hurt them, when the enemies of God faced accountability by God's mighty hand, they were not silent. They praised God for the fact that accountability and justice has been served. And today, you know, it's been on the news all day yesterday, these federal indictments of the former president of the, of the United States. And uh, it's answered prayer for me. If you remember, church, I told you I was praying for his, for his uh, uh, Christ conversion and his criminal conviction. <laughs> That's what I was praying for. And at least one of those things is happening. We're praying that the second thing, that Christ conversion, not just nominal Christianity, but that real conversion of heart will happen. So when the Bible says to pray for your leaders, this is what we do. We pray for their conversion and we pray for accountability so they can be all that God called them to be. But today I want to turn your attention uh, to the word of God found here in the book of Joshua. Found here in the book of Joshua. And we're going to read Joshua in Joshua chapter 5. It's an Old Testament book. And I'm going to read in your hearing verses 10 through 12. Joshua chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. And I'm reading today, I'm preaching from the English Standard Version. You can read along with me as I read in your hearing. Here's the word of the Lord. While the people of Israel were encamped at Gilgal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month in the evening on the plains of Jericho, and the day after the Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. And the manna ceased the day after they ate of the produce of the land, and there was no longer manna for the people of Israel, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. I want to 
I want to read verse 12 again, and I want you to pay attention. You're going to see where we're going today. But, but look at what it says. And the manna ceased the day after hmm, they ate of the produce of the land. And there was no longer manna for the people of Israel, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. I want to preach as the Holy Spirit gives me power to speak today on the subject moving from good to great. Amen. Moving Amen. from good to great. Going from good to great. Let's pray. Father, have your way. And may your glory be felt and seen by everyone listening and watching today. I pray, God, that your spirit would now breathe on us that we might indeed not just be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Going from good to great. Hartford Luckett, the comic book and comic strip cartoonist, created a powerful image of what it is to live beneath one's level of potential. Mm -hmm. Harvard Luckett created this comic strip. It did not have much words in this cartoon comic strip, just images. It was entitled Deep Sea Diving. It showed in one picture a man who was dressing up as if he were heading to the ocean to go deep sea diving. In the second picture it shows him putting on his flippers and, and putting on his wetsuit and uh, attaching to his head the goggles and, and even in his hand an oxygen tank for he was preparing for deep sea diving. But in the third and fourth picture of the cartoon, it is interesting because this man who is seemingly dressed for deep sea diving, the next picture shows him in a bathtub. He is in the bathtub with the wetsuit on. He's in the bathtub with the flippers on. He's in the bathtub with the goggles on. He's got his oxygen tank that is only necessary for deep levels of deep sea diving. He's got it sitting behind or right beside his bathtub. In the next picture, you see him sprinkling sand alongside the ridges of the bathtub as if to simulate that he was near the beach. And it is interesting because in this powerful picture of this man who is dressed for deep sea diving, he has settled for bathtub experiences. I'm already preaching because he's been dressed to go into the depths of the ocean, but rather than getting in the car, rather than taking the effort of driving to the ocean, rather than getting the effort of getting into a boat and going out into the ocean, taking all of the steps it takes to have a deep sea experience, he settled for simply running the tub and getting in the bathtub. And while this might seem comical, for it is a comic strip, there is a poignant lesson that's being taught here, that oftentimes we are dressed for deep sea diving, but we settle for bathtub living. Woo, I'm already preaching. Huh? That, that, we, that we are dressed with all of the things we need to step into greatness, that we are given all of the things we need in order to reach our highest potential, that we are blessed with all of the spiritual, financial things that we need to be able to go to the next level. But am I telling the truth today that some of us with all we got have settled for bath tub experiences. We've settled for bathtub experiences because with all the power that we have available, we still pray 
pitiful, pitiful prayers with all the angels and the hosts of heaven at our beckoning call, we still worry about protection. With all of the provision that God has uh, and the fact that he owns the entire earth, the sea and all that in them is, we still wonder whether God is going to put food on our table. With all of the resurrection power that Jesus has made available for us, here we are sitting in bathtub experiences. And I would suggest to you that we are not the first in this time and in this season to have so much and yet live with so little. We are not the first ones to trust in such a powerful God but oftentimes settle for such a pitiful experience. We are not the first ones to be dressed with, the, with all of the accoutrements and blessings of heaven and yet settle into mediocre experiences which do not require risk and do not require faith. Oh, no, we are not the first ones for come here into the scripture today and come with me back into ancient history and look at the children of Israel. For before you can understand Joshua chapter five, you got to go all the way back to Joshua chapter three. In fact, you even got to go back to Exodus where you begin to see what God has done for the people of Israel. For in a real sense, they are dressed for deep sea living. They have all of the things, all of the experiences, all of the powerful, uh, empowering tools that God has given for them to live deep sea living. I'm in your Bible. For the children of Israel have seen God do miraculous things. God performed a miracle. <clears throat> Not only when he brings them through the Red Sea, but God performs a miracle for them when they run out of water and he brings water out of a rock. That God works out a miracle where they are cooled from the sun for their highly mel melanated skin could not protect them from the scorching heat of the desert. And yet God was a cloud by day. And when they got cold at night, he was a pillar of fire to keep them warm. They were dressed for deep sea living. They had not only traversed through the wilderness for 40 years, but they traversed and their sandals did not wear out and their clothes on their back did not give way. God made a way out of no way. What I'm really trying to get you to understand is, is that throughout the desert experience, God was dressing them for deep sea living. He was giving them all of the things they needed to show them that he was going to take them into deep abundance, into deep favor, into deep blessing, into deep covenant. I mean, after God makes a way through the Red Sea, brings water out of a rock, is your cooling shade in the, in the heat of the day, is your fire at night, continues to protect you, drowns your enemies in the Red Sea. You would think that they would have so much faith. Man, I wish y'all were with me today. So much faith that they would go to the next level. So much faith that whatever God asked them to do, they would do. They would have so much faith. They would believe that God was able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which they could ask. But not only that, God not only did all those things on the precipice of the Jordan River. Huh. Watch the scripture in Joshua 3. It says that they get to the bank, the banks of the Jordan River. And as they get to the banks of the Jordan River, they were told by God, get the priests and get the priests to hold the Ark of the Covenant. And as you wade into the Jordan River, when their feet touch the water, the water will part for them. For just as I parted the Red Sea for you, I'm about to part the Jordan River. Now, don't miss this because the Jordan River was the boundary that kept them from getting into the promised land. So they're on the precipice of the promise, mm -hmm. and now they've got to go into the Jordan River, but the Jordan River is not parted for them before they step in like the Red Sea. Mm 
Now God has to do something different. He says, I want you to start stepping in to the water. And as you step, I'm going to move. Mm -hmm. And then as God begins to move in that moment, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant, their toes begin to touch the water and the water stands up at attention and retreats to its place. And the people of God walk by on dry ground. But don't miss this. The Jordan, the reason this is a miracle is that the Jordan was known for overflowing at this time of the year. So the water was at its deepest when God worked his miracle. It is interesting that God would choose to have them cross when the water was at its deepest level. But how many of you know that sometimes God will do it when it looks like it just can't be done? That God will wait until the waters get to its deepest and then he'll get you to walk by faith and not by sight. I believe I've got a few witnesses that know that God waited till the waters got real deep. You saw as the water was rising. You saw as the bills were rising. You saw as illness was rising in your body. You saw as the tension and drama was mounting in the family system. You saw all the waters getting deeper. And yet, why would God wait till the water got deep to take them through the Jordan River? I'm glad you asked. It's because God waits for it to get deep so that you know the only way you getting through this is by the power of God. And can I pause here parenthetically and just thank him that when it gets the deepest, he is the greatest. Ah, That when the situation gets dark, he becomes the brightest. That when things become the hardest, he gets the best glory out of it. Oh God, watch this. So they've been dressed for deep sea living. I mean, for 40 years, they've seen miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And in between every miracle, they would complain. Between every miracle, they would doubt. And somehow God and his godness did not allow their complaining to disqualify them for a miracle. I wish I could stay here, but I'm trying to get you to understand that they were equipped. They were dressed. They were given all the evidence they needed to know that God is able to do exceedingly, to do abundantly, to do above everything they could think or dream or even dare to ask. He told them when he brought them through on dry ground, go back and get 12 stones. Yeah from the dry bed of that river you just crossed. And when your children's children Uh ask what mean these stones, you tell them this is a memorial of how God God brought us through the deepest of waters into the promised land. And so it is here Uh that we find ourselves in Joshua 5. Because you needed to know all that to understand uh, the magnitude of the moment in verses 10 through 12. Are y'all still with me? Because in Joshua 5, 10 through 12, the Bible tells us that they are now in the promised land. They've crossed the river Jordan. They are in the place that God promised. They called that camp right there in the edge on on the inside of the Canaan land, Gilgal. And here in Gilgal, they are there, camped out, and the Bible says in verse 11, and the day after they had Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land. They ate unleavened cakes and parched grain. Now, that doesn't mean much to us because we don't understand the significance of what's going on here. But can I help you to understand they have crossed the River Jordan, Uh which is the boundary to what God promised. Mm -hmm. They are now standing, living, camped out in the promised land Mm -hmm. that they had waited for for 40 years. They are in the promised land. And the Bible says 
that manna keeps being given to them. Yeah. Now, manna was this bread that God miraculously rained down yeah. from heaven so that they had it every day to eat. Mm -hmm. They could not plant crops in the desert. The soil could not produce a crop. Mm -hmm. So God miraculously mm, rained down bread from heaven. Uh, it was described as sweet wafers, almost with honey on it. It was sweet enough to taste good, okay. but nutritious enough to keep them in the desert and to sustain them. Uh, now, now watch this. This manna fell for 40 years to get them to the promise. But once they get into the promised land, the manna still falls until they ate the produce of the land. Oh, God. Uh, uh, Y'all going to get this. The manna fell uh, for those first five days while they are in the promised land. The manna fell, and for four days, they would, they would see the manna. For four days, yes. they would eat the manna. For yes. they were used to eating the manna. The manna, don't miss this, take note, the manna was God's provision for them. Okay. It was God's provision for their season in the desert. Okay. It was what God miraculously provided uh -huh. for while they were in a desert season on their way to the promise. Wow. But now they're in the promise My Lord. and they're still getting desert provision. Ooh. They're still getting God miraculously raining down bread. Uh -huh. But yet they're looking at fresh crops in the promised land. Oh, you're going to get this. Oh now, remember, the manna was provided even though they had access to the new Canaan harvest. The question I want you to wrestle with today is, why did God still send the manna in the promised land when they're looking at fresh harvest? Remember, I told you it was harvest time. Harvest time was when the Jordan River overflowed its yeah. banks. Yeah. So as they're in the promised land, yeah, I can see y'all in the chat, you're getting this. They're looking at fresh crops that the enemy had left for them uh -huh. because when the enemy, your Bible says, hears that God had stopped the Jordan River for Israel, they left all their fields and yes. their spirit was not there to fight Israel. So God had worked it out yes. where a fresh harvest that right. they had not sown was waiting on them to be reaped. And yet they're still eating manna uh -huh. in the promised land. Can I put it where you can get it today? Yes. Uh, the fact is, is that they were subsisting uh, on desert provision in a promised place. And the Bible says that the manna God kept providing yes. the manna until uh -huh. they finally ate the harvest. Okay. Why? Okay. Because once they ate and tasted the promise, they no longer had to exist on the provision. Hallelujah. Ooh, Holy Ghost, Hallelujah. you better preach this today. Huh? And what I'm really trying to get to you to get understand today is that God is trying to get you from good to great. Ah, yes. Because eating the manna yes. is good. Uh -huh. huh? But God has provided the promise. Yes, and the promise is greatness. Ah, and how okay. many of us are still eating manna Ooh. in a promised land? Ooh, God. Oh, how many of us are still eating manna, oh still, still existing on, on provision yes. when we are in a season of promise. Yes. Can oh. I push this a little bit further so you get it? Yes. Uh, remember, the manna didn't stop falling until they ate the harvest. Yes. God's provision was no longer needed uh -huh. once they used and had and tasted the promise. Okay. God cut off the manna because they no longer needed what God had provided for survival. 
They had survived the desert so that, watch this, they had survived the desert so manna was irrelevant in this season. It fell for 40 years yes. in the desert, but they're not in the desert. They're in the promised land. Yes. And might I suggest to you that, that the manna that God had provided then yes. was not necessary in the promised land. Because the promised land means God has provided all that you need. Yes. But some of us Jesus. are missing our manna. Ooh. Mm. We're grieving that God has stopped doing certain yes. things. We're grieving. I'm coming closer today. Yes. Save me a seat. Yes. We're grieving that God is asking us to leave behind certain things, yes. certain practices, yes. certain coping mechanisms, yes, certain attitudes, yes, certain uh, ways of resilience. Huh? You better preach. Huh? That, that, that clap back attitude and mentality that got you through difficult situations okay. is not necessary now. Right. That was your manner, right. but you in a different season. Right. That external toughness yeah, 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 where yeah, you yeah, didn't yeah. let people see who you were. It ain't necessary now. 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 That was your manner, now. but now you in a different season. Hey. That habit that you needed huh, for hey. those desert situations that got you through those difficult hey. days hey. and those dark nights hey. when nobody understood what you were hey. going hey. through. Yeah. I came to let you know hey. huh, you got to let your manner go because hey. huh, you are now huh, in the promised land huh, and you don't, oh God, you don't need in the desert, huh, you don't need to bring desert provision into your promised season. And I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody need to understand you are stepping into the promise. But some of y'all are grieving and the reason you holding on to old attitudes, old coping mechanisms, yeah. old old ways, old yeah. practices yeah. is because you done got hooked on manna oh, no, when God has provided a harvest and I want to let you know, if you are going to move from good to greatness, yes. you got to get off manna get off. and you got to get your harvest. Hallelujah. Your harvest is hey. right in front of you. Yes, your harvest, you have easy access. Hey. Your harvest is right there for the taking. Hey. Your harvest is in sight. Your harvest is in reach. Your hey. harvest is right in front of you. Hey. Why are we settling for good when God has called us to greatness. Right. Woo! I feel Hallelujah. like preaching this thing today. Uh, you got to understand how huh, this was a whole generation yes. that subsisted on the provision of God for 40 years. They ate nothing but bread from heaven, manna. Uh, for 40 years, that's all they knew. And it is interesting to note huh, that the desert requires survival. But the promised land requires decision and obedience. Oh, God. Uh, and, 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 and manna, uh, manna was easy to get. Uh, manna, all they had to do, watch this, was just gather the, the manna that God rained down from heaven. Manna required gathering, so it was easy to get. Israel, watch this, Israel had to choose in this promised land yes. as God is raining down manna every day mm -hmm. and they're looking at a harvest that is ready to be reaped, yes. which one would they choose? Yes. Would they choose what was easy? Uh -huh. Would they choose what they were used to getting? Okay. Okay. Or would they step into a season yes. where God was giving them the promise? Yes. Please don't miss this. The last falling of the manna was on the first day they ate the produce of Canaan. Okay. This is significant because God didn't stop giving them what they were used to until they were willing to step into yes. what he promised. Yes. <laughs> Why did they choose for four days to keep eating manna when they're looking at harvest? Because the promise requires picking and preparation. Ah. 
Uh See, when you go from good to great, (laughs) greatness requires decision and execution. Yeah. Mm. See, see, remember, the manna just came down. Uh All they had to do was gather. But in order to partake of the promise, Uh they had to pick the produce. And then they had to prepare the produce. Y'all see where I'm going? That greatness calls for more than goodness. That greatness calls for more than goodness. Goodness means I just receive the things that God just pours on me. That's goodness. That's experiencing the goodness of God. But if you're going to step into greatness, then that means you've got to pick and prepare. That means you've got to decide and execute. It means that you've got to co-labor with what God has given you easy access to. Ooh, I just said a word. And some of y'all are wondering, when you look at IG, well, and you look at Instagram, why is it that they are exceeding? Why is it that they're getting more money, they're achieving more things, they're accomplishing more things? Why is it that they're living at that level while I'm living at this level? Okay. Sometimes it's because those people got off manna. <laughs> They were not satisfied with good. They wanted to go to great. And I'm here to push you today to tell you that if you are a child of God, that you have got to begin to step into the season you are already in. You are already in the season of greatness. You just got to put your manna aside. Uh Uh, please, Please catch this. The manna is falling every day for five days. It's falling. It's falling every day, and yet uh, they have to make a choice to go after the produce of Canaan. Uh I want you to understand this. Everyone qualifies for provision, but only the faithful qualify for the promise. Mm. Uh, What do you you mean, preacher? Uh See, See, this is why a lot of people are good but only few people are great. And it is because everyone qualifies for provision. Uh See, see, we we, we done got hooked on provision so that now we we, we think we're doing something because God has been good to us. We sing songs about how God has been good to us. He put a roof over my head and food on my table and clothes on my back. And and, and we start praising God for those things. But can I challenge you theologically and spiritually today? Everyone qualifies for that kind of provision. (laughs) We celebrate in clothes on our back. The Bible says that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. In other words, blessings fall on those who serve God and who don't serve God. So we shout about clothes on our back, but but the evil people got clothes on their back. We shout about food on our table, but there's food on the table of people who are oppressive. We're talking about uh, that we're in our right minds, but there are other people who don't serve God who have their right mind and full mental capacity. Are y'all hearing me today? We shouting on provision when provision is the floor. That people who don't even believe get provision. People who don't even believe have good jobs. People who don't even believe have have, have a good health care and have a good house. We shouting on provision. And what we don't understand is everybody gets provision. Everybody, he woke a whole lot of evil people up today. He woke a whole lot of crazy folk up today. He woke people up today who don't have any thought of the God who woke them up this morning. Provision is for everybody, but understand the promise is for the faithful. And what I came to let you know is, is that too many of us are settling for what unbelievers have. We're thanking God, writing songs, praising God for stuff that everybody gets when we're standing in 
the promise because every believer is living in the season of the promise of God. And we are here standing in the promise, but subsisting on provision. I just said something. I hope you get this. You got to understand they standing in Canaan and still eating manna for four days. They're looking at a promise, but subsisting on provision. And who am I talking to today where you have settled? You've settled. You've been dressed for deep sea diving, but you settled for bathtub living. You're standing in the promised land, but you still asking God for provision. Can I push you a little bit further? Do you know that God is waiting for believers? Yes. Yes. Our prayers ought to be different yes. than those who have not yet believed. Yes. Our prayers, I'm preaching to me right now, yes. has got to go to a different level yes. where we ain't preaching the same prayer. We ain't praying the same prayers yes. as people who don't believe. Yes. You ought not believe in yes. Jesus and still be praying, now I lay me down to sleep. Oh. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. There ain't no way. We have been serving Jesus this long and we still asking God, Lord, protect me from danger. Lord, put food on my table. That's yeah. basic provision stuff. Hallelujah. Folk who don't even believe get that. Yeah. God has called you to promise. What's promise? I'm glad you asked. Yeah. Promise is abundant living. Abundant. Promise is victorious yeah. living. So that our prayers ought to be in alignment with the victory and abundance God has already given us. Our prayers ought not be, Lord, just protect me. That's basic. Our prayers ought to be, God, I need you to move this mountain. God, I need you to make a way out of no way. God, I believe since I'm in the promise, there are certain things owed to me from my oppressors. God, I need Holy Ghost reparations. God, I need more than 40 acres in my mule. God, I need everything that enemy took from me, given back to me. Am I preaching to anybody here today huh, that when you're walking in promise, huh, you leave, huh, you don't have provisional prayers. You pray promise prayers. Promise prayers are, I've seen you work. I've seen you uh, uh, give me food. I've seen you put money in my bank, but I need you to do more than that. Huh? I need you to give me a healthy marriage. Huh? Hey, hey, I need you to take me to a higher level of thought. Yeah. I need you to do the impossible. Yeah. I need you to do it in such a way where people will only know that if God didn't do it, it wouldn't get done. Oh, and is there anybody here that needs to go to that next level of living in promise? I, I, I want to tell you, I want to tell you that this promise is abundant life. This promise that we're living in since we believe in, believe in Jesus, we are living in the promise. The promise was des best described in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 and 11. And this is what God said to them about the promised land. Don't miss this. He said, and when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, yeah. to give you with great and good cities, uh, watch this. He says, with great and good cities that you did not build yeah. and houses full of good things that you did not fill and wells that you did not dig yeah. Woo! and vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. Yeah. And when you eat and are full, then take care lest you forget the Lord who brought you. Oh, God. Do you understand that the promise that God gave them was that you're going to go into places and eat stuff you didn't plant in homes you didn't build, get water from wells you didn't dig, you're going to experience, are y'all getting this? Yeah, yeah. Stuff that you don't have to work yeah. for because it's already been provided for yeah. you. The promise of God for you is that you are to live in abundance yeah. uh, of the things that have been left for you. Yeah. Israel ate the produce from harvest in Canaan the day after the Passover, it was harvest time and they, they and people had planted, but God had chased the enemies away so that when they came to that place, everything was ready for them. Now, Israel was experiencing, was called to experience the abundant life 
The produce was right there, mm -hmm. but they still eating manna. The promised life, the promised life, this promise is not only abundant life, okay. it's victorious life. Yeah. The promise is that we are to live in dominion, favor, and abundance yes. Yes. in the context yes. of struggle and warfare. Okay. Okay. The promise of God mm -hmm. is not that all evil will be eradicated. Okay. Am I preaching to somebody yes, today? Because the truth is, while they were in the promised land, they still had to defeat Jericho. They did. So, so we ain't preaching prosperity gospel okay. that tells you that now you're a believer, everything ought to go your way. No. That's not the description of abundant living okay. and victorious living. See, victorious, abundant living is, is that you walk into what God has already provided for you by the hand of your enemies. But victorious living is that you now live that out yes. in the presence of your enemies. Wow. Ooh, God. Oh, yeah, the like promise that. of God yes. is not that all evil is eradicated, but that we live in such a way where the evil around us yes. is subject to us Hallelujah. so that Hallelujah. they might form the weapon and the weapon the bible says the weapon will be formed but it will not prosper because victorious living says that i am above and not beneath that my enemies are my footstool to give me a leg up to live at the higher level that's the promise you live in if you believe in jesus this is your birthright if you serve Yahweh, Glory. this is what you are supposed Glory. to be doing. Glory. This is the level you're supposed to be on. Yeah. But I want yeah. you to get this for four days. They looked at a ripe harvest and they chose to eat manna, settling for desert food in a promised land. And every day God sent the manna, they had access to so much more uh -huh. than provision. You have access to so much more than what you've been asking for. Yes. You have access yes. to so much more power than yes. what you've been exhibiting. You've got access, oh, Holy God, God, to Lord. so much more <laughs> patience yes. than you've been showing. You've got access to so much more. Yes. But you've got to understand the reason they went for manna is because manna was all they knew. Oh my God. For 40 years, all they knew was manna. I'm going to challenge you right through here. Yeah. I'm going to challenge you. Well, hold on, hold on. If you've been in church for a while, in most churches, in, in most denominations, I can only speak for mine. If you've been here for a minute, you, you have been taught. Hmm. You have been taught and even discouraged not to live a promised land life, but to only exist on provisions. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, preacher? We've been taught to dumb our prayers down because to ask for big things, to believe God for big things okay. is to be presumptuous. Somebody knows what I'm talking about? So that rather than asking oh, for miraculous healings, we attach excuses to our prayers saying, God, well, if you want to do it and if you can do it and if it's your will, when if you live in promise, yes. you live in expectation that God is going to do greater things. But the problem is, is that we We've got hooked on temporary tools of maintenance that were made to get us to the promise. We are hooked on provision, manna, and we make too much of God's provision. We use God's provision as a substitute for promise. Can I help y'all to understand this? Um, let me think. Uh, uh, eating vegetarian meat. Eating vegetarian meat ain't nothing necessarily wrong with that. Ain't nothing simple about that. There's a lot of people who right now listening to me are cooking and getting ready to serve that tofu and, and the soybean stuff and the soy and the soy base and the plant base. But, but understand this, vegetarian meat was created as a transition for those who are on a journey okay. towards being vegan. 
Oh, I just, I just missed, I just messed up some of y'all. The fake meat, that veggie meat, that fake meat is only to help those originally who were getting off of meat so that it was something that was a transition to where you were going. But there's a whole lot of folk who stayed on the transition and while they stayed on the transition of the vegetarian meat, they're now picking up all kinds of other issues because hmm, to stay on something that's transitional, that is used to get you to the promise will sometimes make you sick. And what you got to understand is manna is godly provision for the purpose of getting you to the promise. God's provision is your job. God's provision is your ability to pay bills. Okay. God's provision is your breath, your breath and your health. God's provision is your ability to exist. God's provision is the ability to get through life. God's provision is the way God sends daily blessings so that you can live. And manna is a miracle. Manna was this bread that came down from heaven. It's a miracle. Manna is a miracle. We don't, we don't discount the miracle because God made a way out of no way. It's a miracle that some of us still have a job. It's a miracle that some of us can pay our bills. It's a miracle that some of us can exist with all the trauma that we suffered. It is a miracle you could be abandoned like that and still have joy like that. It's a miracle that you could be neglected like that and still have love like that. Huh? Yeah. Am I talking to anybody? It's a miracle what you've been through. Manna is no small thing. It's a miracle you could suffer the way you suffered and still log on to worship with us today. Manna is a reason to worship, yeah. but manna is not your promise. Okay. Woo! Okay. Making it through your miracle is not your promise. Surviving trauma is your miracle, but it's not your promise. Passing through your pain is a miracle, but it ain't your promise. God didn't call you here to feed you with what you needed there. Okay. Every provision yeah. is good, yeah. but it ain't great. Ah. Employment is good, but greatness is ownership. <laughs> Paying your bills is good, but wealth building and generational financial freedom is greatness. Yeah, yeah. Being married is good, Ooh, uh, but having a healthy, spirit-filled, yeah. loving marriage is greatness. Yeah, yeah. Sex is good, yeah, good, but having shame-free, exclusive, monogamous, sexual intimacy and ecstasy with your covenant partner as the Holy Ghost blesses your interaction. Oh, that's greatness. That's great. Having children is good, but having emotionally healthy connections to your children so that they are individuals and not extensions of your pain, now that's greatness. I'm talking to somebody here today who's ready to go to greatness. I'm tired of good. Anybody can have good. I can work hard and get good. I can try hard and get good. But is there anybody here who wants to go to greatness? Is there anybody here who's tired of basic provision? I want to walk in my promise. So, 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 so let me tell you this and I'll let you go. So how do we get from goodness to greatness? How do we get from goodness to great? How do we get from, from manna to harvest? I'm glad you asked. In verse 10 is the exegetical key that unlocks the majesty of this, of this powerful missive. It is here in verse 10. You, you read it, but we didn't understand the significance of it. It says this, on the 14th day, yeah. they kept the Passover. Yeah. Notice this, they kept the Passover, then they finally ate the harvest. Okay. Now they had been, don't miss it, they had been in the land for four days. Four. But then on that fifth day, which was the 14th day of the month, uh -huh. they, 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 uh, they, they ate the Passover, celebrated the Passover. The Passover is significant because it changed everything. See, the Passover was the ritual experience that helped them remember how God delivered them from Egypt. Ah, yeah. uh -huh. so when they celebrated the Passover... They were able to remember what God had already done for you. 
That's the first thing you got to understand. If you're going to move from goodness, from good to great, if you're going to move from manna to harvest, you've got to remember what God has already done for you. See, when you remember what God has already done for you, it prepares you for the promise. You remember where God brought you from. You remember God's kindness to you in the dark days. You remember God's strength when you were weak. There is power in your memory. Y'all missing the significance of this. Uh, you got to understand they kept the Passover. When they engaged in the Passover, this was something that they reenacted to remind themselves of how God brought them out of slavery in Egypt. Now, ooh, this got me excited. There's a part of the Passover where we only think of the fact that they ate certain lamb and ate unleavened bread. But there's another part you missed of the Passover. And they did it right before God changed their minds. And that is that whenever they did the Passover, they were to take the staff in their hands to put their sandals on their feet and to fasten their belts. Now this was done to signify that they would not be in Egypt much longer okay. because they were about to start towards the promised land. Ooh, did, did you get that? That the, at the very first Passover, God said, I don't want you to just eat the lamb, just eat the unleavened bread. I need you to put on your traveling clothes. Yes. And whenever yes. you put on your traveling clothes, yes. it will remind you, I ain't got long to stay here. Yes. So now in the promised land, now you're getting it, they reenact the Passover. And even though they're in the promised land, they're not eating the promised harvest. But when they practice Passover, they put on their traveling clothes. Yes. And when they put on their traveling clothes, they they remember, yes. you know what? We are where God said we yes. would be. Yes. I've got sandals on like I'm going somewhere, yes. but I am where he wants me to be. Yes. I've got my traveling clothes, but I don't have to travel because I'm yes. standing in his promise. Yes. When you can remember how far God brought you from, then you are ready to walk into purpose. But number two, and this is it. Not only do you remember where he brought you from, you got to realize that he brought you out for more than just survival. Yes. For when they took the Passover, they realized that God had not done all of that for them to simply eat the same manna. For you see, Jesus is our Passover lamb. Jesus died to set us free from the penalty of sin. And remember in Passover, they would shed the innocent blood of that young innocent lamb and spread it over the doorpost of the, of the house so that when the angel of wrath came by, he would pass over their homes so that they were saved by the blood of the lamb. And so we too are saved from the penalty of sin by the blood of the lamb, his blood covers our sins. And when God's wrath against sin came, he passed over us because of the blood. Jesus came all the way down from heaven, gave his life for us, and he could not have, he did not do all of that just for us to exist. God did not bring me out just to work a job. God did not bring me out just to get a home. God did not bring me out just to build wealth. God did not do all of that just for me to live a good life. No, God did all of that so I could live in abundance and victory. Amen. So as I take my seat, here's the last thing you need to understand. When they took that Passover, everything shifted because they remembered they were where God promised they would be. And then they realized Oh, he didn't bring us out here to eat manna. Why would he bring me this far to eat what I was eating in the desert? And what they had to understand is that the level of their deliverance denoted their level of their destiny. In other words, huh, the fact that God did all of that, 10 plagues, Brought them through the Red Sea, water out of a rock, kept them cool in the heat of the day, kept them warm in the coldness of night, brought them through the Jordan River and caused their enemies to scatter. The level of deliverance 
denotes your level of destiny. Ooh, you don't miss your shout. The level of suffering God brought you out of is the same level of abundance and victory God intends for you to live in. So the level that you suffered, God is about to do abundantly. Yeah. The level that you've been through, God is about to blow your mind. He's about to give you double for your trouble because when you remember what he's done and realize how far he's brought you from, you don't settle for manna, but you get everything God wants you to have. And as I close, I want you to understand that everything God has for you is right in front of you. It's going to take some picking and it's going to take some preparing, but you got easy access. He's It's one prayer away. You got easy access. It's one day away. You got easy access. All you got to do is call on the name of the Lord and he will give you strength to overcome every fear that talks you out of your harvest. Every voice in your head that talks you out of your harvest. Every voice in the world that tries to stop you from getting your harvest. I want you to know God has called you to greatness. Stop settling for manna when you are in the promised land. The Bible says that when they stopped eating the manna, after they ate Passover, and they tasted of God's harvest, God didn't have to send it anymore. God has called us to greatness, and it's time to walk into it. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray that as you step into this promise, that God will indeed increase your faith to believe that that which he is destined for you, you will have. All you got to do is expand and stop focusing on just what he provides and, and look at what he's promised and claim every single Amen. promise he has in his word for you. Amen. I want to pray that promised land living over you yeah. in your marriage, in your home, in your parenting, on your job, in your own self life, that you will walk into promise so that you can live in greatness. God, I thank you today for this word. I thank you for your love. I thank you. I, I thank you, God, that you will not allow us to just simply be settled in, in, in what you provided, but you push us through the sweet nudging of your spirit yeah. to go on to greatness. Mm -hmm. God, I pray today for somebody who has been subsisting on good. They've been satisfied with you just being good and help them to understand that you're greater than good. You're God. Mm -hmm. So God, we give you permission to be great in our lives. And we ask that you help us to step into the greatness you've destined us for. Whatever part of our lives, Lord, in which we have settled for good, may we now step into greatness and take on the task of greatness. Help us to know that this it's going to take some effort. We got to do some picking and some preparing, but it's far greater than simply existing. And so, God, I pray that you'll help us to live this abundant life that Jesus promised us and gave to us. Now we thank you for those who are making decisions even now for this promised life. And God, I pray for those who will choose you, who will join your church today, even now seal their decisions in Jesus' name, amen. On the screen, on the screen, we're gonna put up the code or put up the, uh, the number for you to text, text Jesus to this number. You can text Jesus to this number on the screen if you want to give your life to this Jesus who has promised you eternal life. All you have to do is accept him. And guess what? You cross the River Jordan and you are in the promised land living. Yeah. That eternal life can begin today as you accept Jesus Christ. Today, there are those who have accepted Christ, but you're saying, I want to be part of Revision Church Atlanta. I want to be a part of this church. You can text Jesus to this number 
as well. Thirdly, there are those who are saying, listen, I just need to go deeper. I want somebody to pray with me, somebody to partner with me as I walk in promised land living, going from good to great. You can now uh, just text Jesus to this number as we receive the power of God to walk in the promise of God. May God continue to bless you as you make those decisions today. We are grateful for all of you. Listen, Pastor Gene is going to come and lead us in worship through giving, but we want to remind you that today we have our service project. We are going to be serving our young brothers and sisters. These are LGBTQ plus community members, young people who were experiencing homelessness and hunger put out of their homes, ran away from their communities because of their lifestyle, their identities, and their choices. We want to love on them at that center. We're going to be there to receive clothes uh, that will be distributed to these youth and then also to help with their food pantry today so that we can deal with their homelessness and their hunger. We believe that God is going to bless us, church, as we do that. So Pastor Gina will tell you where we're going to meet. It's from 3 to 6 today at the Lost and Found Youth Center. We'll have that up on the screen. We hope that you'll join us. Pastor Gina, would you lead us in worship through giving? Yes, amen, amen. Thank you, Pastor Knight, for reminding everyone about our service project today. If you're not able to join and you just want to give, there is a website where you can give Lost and Found Youth. Dot org that is lost and found youth.org where you can give directly to the shelter uh, and give so that they can provide more meals and more things for these youth. You can also give here at Revision Church Atlanta to everything that we are doing in our community. And you can give two ways. You can give through PayPal and through our website. Once again, that is through PayPal. The information to text and get that PayPal PayPal information will be on your screen, and you can give through our website, revisionchurchatlanta.org slash give. We have a few other things also going on here at Revision. July is a month packed of lots of events for you to connect with one another and to meet one another. So in addition to our service project today, the Father's Day outing is tonight. If you have signed up already, we just want to remind you that this is only for the fathers, uh, only for the fathers. You want them to have a special night out to have fun and bowl. There, we also have the Hang In There Rope Course, the Hang In There Rope Course, which will be on Saturday, June 17, from 4.45 to 8 p.m. Activities include rock climbing, low ropes, giant swings, leap of faith, activities for all ages. So if you are interested, the deadline to sign up is tomorrow night, Sunday night, June 11th. So make sure you sign up uh, through the information that I've shared on the screen. We also have a 5K that we are participating in. We are participating in the Southside Medical 5K race. All proceeds um, for this race will be going to the Southside Medical Center. So we ask that you sign up and join us as we run or walk. Well, we're not discriminating or walk in this 5Ks to raise money for the Southside Medical Center. We are also looking for Sela hosts, as we shared in the beginning. We are looking for Sela hosts. So, are you, if you are interested, and the Lord has touched you today to say, "I want to be a Sela host," you can do so through the QR code on the screen here. Just get your phone out and uh, scan the QR code, and it will bring you to the form to sign up and be a part. That is all our announcements for today, and we are so happy that you joined us online, and we pray that you will move from great to, from good, sorry, from good to greatness. So we thank you for joining us, and we'll leave you here with a prayer. God, we are so thankful that you have brought us to good, that you provide for us everything that we need but Lord, we have enough faith to say that we want to go to great, that there is more than we are experiencing now in our lives, whether emotionally, physically, mentally, or spiritually, Lord. So by your power, today, through this week, may you 
begin this process of moving from good to great. We believe that you will do so. And we thank you for everything you will do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. See you guys next week in person.